Father, once again, we come before you and we are grateful for this opportunity. Uh, we are grateful for the safety uh, that you have provided for us this week. We're grateful that we can gather, celebrate you, everything that you've done for us. And now as we turn our attention to your word, I pray, Father, that it meets us where we are. Different levels of maturity, different places on the journey, different circumstances, different things going on in our lives that are challenging us. I just pray that your word meets us right now where we are. And that through this, through our obedience to you, we can draw closer to you. We pray and ask these things in your son's name. Amen. All right, so. Uh, obviously, you know, this week sitting at home a lot and uh, the whole routine of life is just turned upside down and uh, I'm sitting there having conversations that I wouldn't have normally had at times that I wouldn't have normally had them, okay? So uh, a couple mornings, man and I, before the kids are awake, you know, probably, I don't know, 11-ish, um, <laughs> uh, man and I are having some conversations and we're talking about this sermon series, we're talking about this this challenge that we're going to present to you about, about journaling, right? And so as, as I'm sitting there having this conversation, and Stella has now come out, and she's part of this particular conversation, I, I, I noticed that there's a new app on my phone, and it's Journal. And, I, and I'm sitting here thinking, one of you guys, because our family, we're part of the Apple cult, and uh, like we're all in everything, iPads, MacBook Pros, the whole nine yards, everything we have is... Is, is Apple, and we have the family share plan thing, and, and, and so when one person does something, we all know about it, and so on and so forth, which makes it inconvenient sometimes you try to hide stuff from people, but, you know, it's just, it's part of, of what it is, and I'm sitting there thinking, oh, one of my family members, because we've been talking about journaling, they have downloaded an app for journaling, and Stella goes on to inform me that, no, Dad, this is just part of the latest update on our iPhones. Now, if you don't have an iPhone, sorry, you got to look. You got to go do some extra legwork on your own. But Apple, I hear, caught wind that that we were going to start a journaling prayer <laughs> challenge, and they went out and they created an app just for you to make it easier. Because I've gotten this a couple of times, okay, and 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 it was like, hey, tell me about your journaling experience. Uh, I don't journal. Well, why not? Uh, because I hate to write, and that's me. Like, I, I, hate, I hate to write. As a matter of fact, I've gone back and looked at some of my paper journals right now, and I'm pretty sure only God knows what was recorded <laughs> on those pages. Because I look at them, and I'm like, what did I pray for right there? I mean, that, that's not even English, I don't think. And so, so I, I, I get the whole deal that, man, journaling can be tough sometimes because, man, we have just gotten to where we don't even like to write. And then some of you are like, oh, no, I write in cursive, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Great. We, we love you. Uh, but as we get into a challenge, um, I do want you to know that there are several forms of this that, that you can do. You don't have to use the notebooks that we're going to talk about in a little while, but those are there to, to, to guide you. Um, we are this morning continuing uh, this short series on prayer, and, and I hope that uh, you have certainly been praying that 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 you are, I've been praying that you have been encouraged to renew or to deepen this discipline of prayer. Um, some of you are like prayer warriors, man, I pray all the time, great. Some of you are like, man, I, I, I go in waves, man, like I, I pray for a while and I'm dedicated and I'm not. Some of you are, man, I just pray when I need to pray. And so so I'm hoping the past couple of weeks have kind of encouraged that, that you've, or you've either been drawn to start praying or Man, I'm encouraged. I'm going to keep on praying. Uh, we could easily spend, and the rest of this year, on this one spiritual discipline. Because it's critical to a healthy relationship. If we talk about relationships a lot around here, and you talk about the things that, that fuel those relationships, man, prayer is one of those things that, that, that has to happen, especially between us and God. And so God says to his people, this is what we've looked at, call to me. I mean, he told Jeremiah, but that message was true to you and I. Call to me. And he assures us that he's going to hear us. 
And he's going to answer us. And he's going to give us things that are going to deepen the relationship. So that's what we've kind of talked about in a nutshell the past couple of weeks. Today, a couple more aspects of prayer to consider as you develop this discipline of prayer in your life. All right, And I don't mean that to be offensive. because Some of you are like, man, I've been a Christian long when you've been alive. I know some things about prayer. And that's, that's, that's tremendous. I, all I want to do is help you to take it deeper. All right, that, That's been the prayer this week. And so in Paul's first letter to the church of the Thessalonians, Paul is giving some final instructions in living in a way that pleases God. And so 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16, 17, and 18 uh, follow along. You've heard it before. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now, we're going to talk more about God's will for you in just a few minutes, but three things are God's will for you based on what we just read. Right? Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. Now, you got to take the whole context of verses 12 through 18 to actually understand everything that is God's will for you. Okay, Just these three things. You, you can't sit here today and say, oh, you mean those three things? That's God's will for me? No, no there, there's actually a, a much deeper list when you, when you go back to the beginning of the paragraph and you read verses 12, 13, 14, and 15 as well because they give us a lot of instruction on, on how to treat one another and to live with one another and then he transitions to this right here that whole section is god's will for you he's just saying of all these things that are going on that there's a mark of maturity is that you are always rejoicing that you are praying continually and that you're giving thanks in all circumstances. Now, now, I want you to think about those words. Because in the Greek, that's what they mean. Rejoice always. What about I just lost my job? Pray continually. What do you mean, pray continually? Give thanks in all circumstances. I mean, I mean, those are all inclusive. It's like, is that even possible? Can we pull this off? What's interesting about the human brain, secular neuroscientists have discovered that there is a common link between joy and gratitude. They lump happiness, because they're not Bible-believing people, they lump happiness and joy into kind of the same pot. But there is something in the brain that connects genuinely grateful people and people who are happy, and vice versa. You find people who are unhappy. You find people that are just kind of, and you, you know some of these people, right? You've been around some of these people. Man, they're just, man, they're just not happy people. Sometimes you would even classify them as just being kind of miserable, like all the time. A drag to be around, a burn to be around. Uh, you, you, you know who some of these people are because they're out there. Are they grateful? Are they full of joy? And usually one of those two things or both of those things are missing in those people. And so there's this link by the way you were created that when you were grateful and when you were joyful, those two match up together. And so part of this challenge that we're going to introduce to you in a couple of weeks, okay, it's not going to be right now, it's, it's going to be a gratitude prayer journal. That we'll, we'll, we'll get to that again in a couple of weeks. And, and, and it is designed, and I've, been, I've done this, and it's like, wow, it's really, it's, it's attitude changing is what it is. That, that when you develop this discipline of being grateful in all circumstances and figuring out what that's like and how to do that, and it's not easy, and it's certainly not natural for this guy right here. It completely changes my mood and my attitude. So Paul knows this long before neuroscientists of the day are discovered. 
And via the Holy Spirit's prompting, he writes. Rejoice always. In all circumstances, be grateful. And then right in the middle, he throws in, pray continually. Now, the Greek word here, and it's long, means never stop. Never stop. Pray without ceasing. Now, now you, you think about that. You sit there, and, and, and we, we ponder this, and we're like, what in the world is going on? What, what is Paul really and truly meaning? Because you take our culture, and, and the way the West views prayer, and the way we've been taught in churches what prayer looks like, prayer is like this thing that we do where we close our eyes, we, we bow our hands, and we talk to God, and, and for the most part, we're giving Him some form of a list. Is that what Paul is suggesting? That I sit and I, I'll use the word babble, I talk to God 24 hours a day? Is that what Paul is suggesting here? Because it's not feasible. My boss is not going to like it. Well, God's my boss, so maybe he will like it. But the rest of you, you work for people out in the real world. They're not going to like it if you're just sitting there on the job praying 24 hours a day, not getting anything done. And Jesus goes on and he tells us in a few minutes, hey, he doesn't even like babbling. Don't be like the hypocrites that just babble, that just go on and on and on and on. No, that's not what pray continually means. At LifeBridge for some years, and Caleb and I can go back and, and, and find it, we consistently teach that prayer is constant communion with God. Like We, we have taught this for years now. And, and that's a Louis Giglio definition that I heard him teach on many, 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 many years ago. And, and I think that he is spot on. Because most of us, we, we would say that prayer is this communication with God. Our prayer is constant communication with God. And it's, it's not communication only. Right? That's a, that's a part of this. But prayer is constant communion with God. And to commune, and we just took communion, to commune is to be in the presence of. To, to be and to share intimate thoughts with. That's what prayer is. Prayer is not a, a five-minute quiet time where I give God a list that's on my heart. That's certainly a component of prayer. And, and if, we're, if we're going to be obedient to God's teaching on prayer, He wants us and He expects us to ask Him for things. Okay? So as you're going throughout your day, think about it. Your brain is locked into task and responsibilities, hopefully, most of you. You've got work tasks. I mean, some of you get up, you've got the nine to five. You get to a place, and it is go, go, go. It's busy. You're making things. You're building things. You're dealing with issues. You are going, and you have these work tasks that your brain is locked into. There's needed conversations with other people in your life that your brain is locked into. Your marriage, your spouse, you, you have to have these conversations with these people where, where you are focused on them. You're listening to them and, and you're, you're talking with them. Your children, your co-workers, your parents. So there's, there's tasks, there's responsibilities that must take place every single day. But when my brain isn't engaged in those things, where does it go? What, what do you think about? I mean, when there's downtime, what's it, what's it go to? Is it, is it mindless social media and short form content? Is that where your brain goes? Is that the natural response? Does it go to your, your favorite TV show? 
Does it go to hours of conversation about who will be the next coach and how he's going to fill the shoes of a legend? Is, it, is, is that where your brain goes? How often? Be honest with yourself here. How often does your brain go to God outside of just a blocked off time where you're asking for something. You take the closest relationship you have. Me, it's a man. What would that relationship be if the only bit of conversation, if, if, all, if, if the only communication was a request for different things? What, what would that be like? And, and here's the thing. The some things that we ask for may be serious and worthy of asking for. However, if that's all that we ever shared within the relationship, you know as well as I know, it's going to be shallow and unhealthy. Healthy relationships need intimate, personal moments. Healthy relationships need light-hearted moments. They need serious moments. They need moments where, where silly things happen. We've been together for 30 years. 27 of those married. Uh, I, I, we know each other very well because of the balance of those moments over the course of time. In our house, I don't know if it's this way with y'all, but if a common phrase is spoken in conversation that's part of a song or movie, it, it gets then sung or, the, or quoted. And so yesterday, we're talking about trying to come off the mountain and come to the real world to see how things are. All right? And, and so I'm getting dressed. She says, what you doing? And I said, I'm going to assess the situation. To which she replied, Gramps is dying. Now, y'all don't know what that is because y'all don't know classic films like we do Polly Shore and Son in Law. <laughs> that's what that's from. But, but I knew it was coming. I knew as soon as I said, assess the situation, Gramps is dying. And she wasn't even like sitting right there, she was in the other room. We were having this conversation. Man, that, that's, that's how well the relationship. Has, has, has moved forward. And it's all because of those moments, the balance of those moments. My brain never drifts to God during the mundane moments of the day. We will never have the balance of those moments that develop a deep and abiding if we continually keep God as this thing that we check off, this task that we check off, we will never have a deep relationship with Him. Continual prayer is the balance of those moments with God. Serious. Lord, I'm in trouble. Lord, I'm scared. I don't know how this thing is going to turn out. Intimate. God, my heart hurts over this thing. Lighthearted. Thanks for bailing me out of that one, God. I tell you, coming down our mountain, coming down our little dollar mountains where we where we live, it's just a hill, okay? Once you go out west and you see like mountains, you never come back. But people around here call things mountains. And and you you you, you come down our, our hill, right? And and <laughs> truck was sliding this morning. I'm praying, Lord, please don't let me end up in the ditch and scratch my truck. And Amanda's over there saying some other things that we can't be repeating on camera. <laughs> she, she, she did she did not. She she did <laughs> she she did not, right? But that's a lighthearted moment where whew, made it out of that one. Press on. So here's the thing. 
Here's the thing we're going to do. Uh, we're going we're gonna to encourage you to do for the next six weeks. We are going to add to prayer, all right, the discipline of journaling. Now, for some of you, you're just like, you've already written it off. You're cring oh, whatever, I'm not doing it. Um, some of you, you're cringeworthy. And some of you are like, ooh, yes, something new. Because some of you just live in that world and you totally in enjoy it. Um, this journaling discipline, here's what I want to encourage you with. This journaling discipline is to help us develop the pray continually mindset. Okay? It's more than just let me write down a bunch of things I need and then check the boxes once they're answered or once I get tired of praying. Okay? There are many different methods of journaling. Uh, we're going to introduce a method that isn't as, as common, okay? uh, but it's simple and it's straight out of the Bible. As I was thinking about why do we journal? Why is this lumped into you know, Richard Foster and, and Dallas Willard and these guys that write on spiritual disciplines that, that help you create healthy relationships with the Lord. Why is journaling one of these things? And, and both these guys and several others come back to Jeremiah. It's not coming up here. But God told Jeremiah, you call on me, you come and you pray to me, and I'm going to listen to you. You will seek me and when you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you. And I see this journal as, as a step in this, I am seeking the Lord. I am seeking to know the Lord. Not just reading Scripture, because I'm sure you all do that every day, and not just meditating on Scripture, because I'm sure that's a, that's a discipline that you all, you, you all engage in. Okay, at different times throughout the year. But, but this journaling is, a, is another step. It's another way of developing a discipline that's going to help me seek the Lord and get to know Him on a different level. And so the challenge to you is to block off three or four times a week, okay, where you're going to sit down 10 to 15 minutes. I'm going to share with you one of mine from this week. It took like eight minutes. Okay, this is, this is what we're looking for. We'll give you a notebook. If you don't like the notebook, do it on your computer. I do all mine on my computer. I can't, I told you, I can't read my handwriting. All right, I sit there with some good music with my playlist on that I like, and I sit there early morning, and I have gone through this three or four times. And we are going to journal based on how Jesus taught us to so let's go there, Matthew chapter 6. It's going to come up here. I'm going to read through and talk about this first part in just a second. Because this is the Sermon on the Mount. It's got a vast audience. It's got Pharisees. It's got teachers of law. He's got the people that know Scripture. And, and then he's got a bunch of people that are like completely new to this. And he's going through the sermon, and he's giving them instructions on how to live, right? And when you pray. When you pray, like there's just this assumption that you're going to pray. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. All right, now we're not going to camp out here and spend a lot of time, okay, because there's a lot here that we, we could talk about. But let, let's hit the big ones here. First off, okay, there's nothing wrong with corporate prayer. All right, the issue was that, that these these Pharisees would come and it was all about, it was clout for them. Look how important I am. I'm the one that gets to pray. And so I will pray. And they would use these elaborate words and they were very eloquent and it was the masterful works of art and they were doing it for the attention. And God's like, hey, don't, don't be like that. All right? There's nothing wrong with us coming together and praying. 
It's not what he's saying. But when it's personal, here's what he wants. Don't stand up before others. Don't cause a scene. Don't make it a show. But you go into your place. Okay, you go to your prayer closet, if you will. I don't have a prayer closet. I have a prayer recliner. All right, my prayer recliner I, in my time is long before anybody else in the house wakes up. No one else sees it. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. All right, so that's, that's the mindset. That's the setting. That's what we're trying to create in this. And when you pray, don't keep on babbling like the pagans. You got some over talkers in your life that share. I know what you're thinking. Yeah, you're one right now. Um, I hear you. Um, you got some over talkers that just keep going and going and going, right? Just don't, don't be like that. Because you're going to pray continually. You're going to have this mindset of prayer where, where, the communing with God is more than just the communication part. But this is what Jesus is talking about. He's talking about this communication part right here. And, and He's basically telling you, it's okay to have a list. We're going to see that in just here in just a second, it's okay to have a list of things to pray for. But don't let it be about the list because guess what? He already knows what you need. Think about that. Like, like that's the last thing Jesus says before the instruction on how to pray. Do not be like the people that just keep going on and on and on and on. For your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Church, I'm a list maker. I've, I've, I've got, I'm going to read some of mine here in just a minute. I, I've, I've, I've got a list of things I'm praying for. But he doesn't want it to be about the list. This then, he says, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, I'm going to read this and I'm going to walk back through it. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into, into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. You see what he's saying here? He's saying this is how you should pray, not what you should pray. Okay? There's nothing wrong with praying in Scripture. I'm, I'm behind that at times. Okay, but this, this right here is not what prayer is. This is a model of, of how we should pray. And so we should come before God, our Father in heaven. Now, there is reverence with the title Father. Okay, we get off over here and the, you know, Daddy God and that kind of stuff. And, and I'm, I'm just telling you, that gets underneath my skin. And I know people are trendy and they're trying to be cool. But there is still a reverence to the title Father. And where is He? In heaven. He's not in the sky. He's not floating around on a cloud. He is on the throne. In heaven. Hallowed be Your name. Great! is your name. Set apart is your name. Like, like, that, like that's how we're coming before God in this time of prayer. Father, You are in heaven and great is Your name. Your kingdom come, Your will be done. Jesus talked all about the kingdom. He's not talking about the return. He's, he's talking about this mindset of, 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 get this, your kingdom come, your will be done. What's God's will for every single one of us? What's kingdom living? Well, if you, you study the Gospels, and you study what Jesus talks about the kingdom, it's how we become like Him. 
That, that, that's the will for God, for Jesus in your life, is that you become like him. And next week we're going to talk an awful lot about that very thing. That that's what he wants for you. While, while you're navigating life, while you're waking up and you're going to the 9 to 5, while you're doing the thing you do, while you're interacting with people, what's God's will for you? That whatever the situation is, you are becoming like his son. How you handle tension, how you handle conflict, how you handle the annoying people, how you handle whatever the case may be. It's becoming it and doing it like He does. Your will be done on earth and as it is in heaven. Oh, wait a minute. There's a heavenly component to this? How are they doing things in heaven? You know how they do things in heaven? It honors God in every aspect. Every thought. Every word. Everything spoken. Honors. That's what doing His will as it's done in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Meet my needs today, God. Take care, take care of the things I need today. Give us today our daily bread. Is it wrong to pray for anything tomorrow and, and coming down? No, there's nothing wrong with that. All right, I'm, I'm praying about some stuff coming up. We, we're we're going to be introducing a capital campaign later on this year. Praying about that right now. Okay? Nothing wrong with that. Forgive us our debts. Go ahead and make that personal. Give me my debts. Forgive me my sins. And if you're sitting there and you're like, man, I don't know. Do I even have sin in my life? I've been a Christian a pretty long time. I kind of got this thing dialed in. Well, there's another prayer that we'll reference in just a minute when we walk through the journaling example that will help you with that. I'm telling you right now, I can still make the list. When I go stand before the mirror, and I'm like, how did I fall short of honoring God today? I can make the list. Lord, forgive me of these things. As I have forgiven others. You holding on to a grudge? You, you're holding on to something that's just still eating at you. And you're like, yeah, I've moved on from it, but I'm not really like moved on and forgiven. Those are tied together. Keep reading. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from. Keep, keep the spiritual aspects of my life safeguarded. Do not let me fall into temptation. God, I know that there's spiritual warfare, there's spiritual journey that's going on right now in, in, the, in the cosmos. Keep me protected. So that's how we're to pray. And so we're going to journal that. So we're going to journal based on the Lord's Prayer example. Okay, three to four times a week. You're going to do this for the next four weeks. I, I, I can't remember the exact date, but coming up, we're going to we're going to alter this our journaling to, to a gratitude thing that, that we've got set up for you. Okay, for three or four times a week, you're just going to walk through the Lord's Prayer. You see, in your notebooks, you have a little piece of paper. It's kind of got it marked out for you. If you have any questions, feel free to text me. I'll more than happy to, to answer those for you. You're going to start with just praise of the Father in heaven. It's going to be awkward. Because most people don't just sit around and think of praiseworthy things to say about God. But it's going to start with praise of our Father in heaven. With that, here is a great place to introduce a gratitude list. Because why are we praising him? We're praising him for who he is. And so you're going to write down the things that you're thankful for. Then you're going to pray, help me understand what you desire for my life. 
God, what's, what's your will for me? The specifics of it. I know the big picture is I'm to become like Jesus. I, I know that I'm supposed to honor you in all things. What are the specifics? So help me understand what your desire for my life is. Then three, you're going to move on needs for today. Man, what, what are the needs for today? And, I, and I'm telling you right now, there's, there's needs. And, and most of us, we're, we're, we're middle class citizens and we have you know, plenty of food in the pantry. <coughs> Power bills are paid up. I got my internet, got all my devices. I got, I got, I got needs. I got my materialistic needs covered. Most of us. Some of you, man, there's like some serious needs. I mean, my car is not working. I don't have the money to replace whatever. Lord, I need some help. Some of your needs go way beyond materialism, though. Some of your needs are... There's this illness, there's this sickness, there's this thing that is being dealt with. Lord, take care of it today. And then you get into the list of sins. And if you don't know, if you're just sitting there and you're like, man, I, just, I don't know. Well, that's why the reference of Psalm 139.24 is there. Because that's a prayer. From David to God. Lord, will you reveal anything to me that I'm doing wrong? Like, like point it out. Make it clear. So what are the list of sins that we need forgiveness for? And I'm telling you right now, this is your journal. We're not going to share these with anybody else. The more specific you are here, broader and brighter the light is that's brought to us. And you will be surprised at how the more you acknowledge the sin is there, how much quicker it's a thing in your past. And so we're going to pray, here's my sins, forgive me of those things. And then list of who and why I need to forgive others. And hopefully, you're sitting there and you're like, man, my life is good. I don't, I don't need, I, 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 I can't imagine that there's always going to be somebody there. Okay? So, but if there is, if there's that grudge, there's that thing that you're holding on to, I need to forgive them. And then, of course, the last thing is, Lord, protect. So you're going to journal. Here's how simple it is for me. I'm going to read you one of mine. I did it this week. You guys are much smarter than I am, so I'm sure you know, your vocabulary is going to be completely different. But I did this, and it got easier over the course of the, of the week as I did it. So here's my prayer. Father, you're solid. Great is your name, and I can't even imagine it all. Thank you, Lord, for redeeming me. Thank you for providing for me and my family. All that I have is from you. Lord, I am grateful for my marriage. I am grateful for my children. I am grateful for the health. God, help me to understand your will for my life. What do I need to stop doing so that I can become more like Jesus? What do I need to start doing so that I can become more like Jesus? Help me, Father, with wisdom and discernment for leading life bridge and how we as a congregation can better love our neighbor. God, you have met all my material needs for today. Please give us clarity for our house and the decisions that have to be made. And then there's some personal things here that 
I'm not going to share that. But I pray for healing for a couple of people. I pray for some things that a couple of people have called on the past month and asked me to specifically pray for. My children are on here for specific reasons. All that is right here under needs for today. Father, forgive me where I've stumbled. Forgive my desire to keep up with the world and live like the world instead of living in a way that pleases you and doing what matters most to you. Lord, forgive my lack of patience and gentleness. And I couldn't think of anybody that I need to forgive. If there's a grudge between us, you let me know about it. I'm willing to forgive. Maybe I need to forgive. Lord, keep my family safe from Satan's attacks on our lives. I love you. Amen. Now, I did this just as an experiment to see how what it was going to do this week. Oh, seven minutes. Seven minutes on this part. So I want to encourage you. Start doing this three or four times a week. And then see what happens. Not all the answer prayers, not all the things that get checked off the list, not, not all the stuff. But what happens in the relationship with you and God? God, thank you for your word. Thank you for uh, this opportunity once again. Jesus gave us this model of prayer. And so as we develop this discipline in our lives, may, may, may we experience what Jesus taught at a deeper level than what we have heard others teach on. God, this whole thing is, is not for, for show. It's not for busy work. God, this whole, whole thing is just so that I can deepen my relationship with you. And out of that, God, it overflows into other relationships. So, Father, please give us the desire to want to do this. May we see the fruit that comes from a deeper relationship with you.